Okay, we'll go ahead and get started um, tonight. Thanks for coming, everyone. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, we would also like to thank you in advance for your patience as this is our first parent webinar. So we are learning as we go. Um, and we are very excited to, to be able to provide this for you tonight. Um, we did push out a survey to all the parents and one thing that kept coming up was, oh my gosh, my kid has all these learning platforms and I don't know what to do, what it looks like, how to manage it. And so um, we got together and thought that this might be a really good idea to just provide you some time and some information to look at the learning platforms, hear from our teachers, um, and then at the end we'll have some time for some questions. Um, you'll notice that this is webinar style, so you can't talk or um, we can't see you, uh, but you can see us, um, but you can write questions in the chat. So um, our Director of Communications, Kelly, raise your hand, Kelly, is going to be kind of um, DJing and kind of monitoring the chat and then she'll bring up some questions at the end. Um, I do want to respect your time though, so we might get, get to all the questions tonight, but then Kelly and I will review the questions and then provide an FAQ that we'll post on the website. This webinar will also be recorded and post, uh, posted on the website so that you'll be able to look back at it. It will be broken down into learning platform so that you're like, okay, I need more, I need to review that whole Canvas thing. You could just go directly to that. You don't have to listen to all of, all of everything else. So um, we're hoping that that helps you as parents, help to navigate um, these trying times. Um, so again, welcome tonight. Uh, my name is Tiffany Cole. I'm the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment at BBCHS. Um, and I am joined by some amazing teachers and administrators on this call. Um, I'm telling you, the, the way that teachers and administrators have been working to try to make this um, the best possible situation for your students, I can't tell you. I'm, um, I'm really honored and blessed to work with such a great group of people. Um, and you're going to see um, some of those people tonight and hear from them. So I'm excited for that for you. Um, tonight's webinar is going to focus um, on the common platforms, okay? that are at BBCHS. We know that there are other tools and apps out there, um, but we're just going to focus on the common learning platforms today. And, and we know that reliance on digital platforms for learning has been new for families. We understand that. Um, and learning anything new can cause a little bit of discomfort. And so we want to, um, we just want to observe that and say, yes, we know that this is hard. Um, it, but I also, want to invite you to see that some of these challenges are an opportunity for us all to grow in our digital competencies. Um, this is a skill that all students are going to need for post-secondary education in the workplace. And so um, we do have some, you know, good information for you tonight. And um, hopefully you'll walk away feeling a little bit uh, more informed as a parent on how you might help your student um, get through these times as a student. So. Um, I'll go ahead and start the presentation. Um, our intention tonight, we always like to start with intention here. Our intention is to provide you information, strategies um, on how to help your students interact within their learning platforms. We know that you want to help your student. We know that through our, our parent survey, we could hear the language of frustration. I want to help them. I don't know where to go. I don't know what this is. Um, so we're hoping to fill that gap for you tonight. Um, like I said, I'm the Director of Curriculum Instruction. I've been in education 19 years now, and, and, and in my 19 years, not once have I seen anything like this. So I know that this is not easy. Um, and not only is this my work and my passion, but I'm also a parent. So I'm navigating both sides of this. So I can really empathize with what you're feeling right now um, as you try to negotiate what's happening with your children, um, their social emotional health, their education, all of those things. I know that this is really challenging. Um, so we just thought we'd provide you just a couple tips here at the beginning um, to help your students through this digital space, right? So even when they're here in school, they might still be interacting within the digital space. And then when they're at home, they're definitely, like that's, that's the thing, right? They're definitely interacting with that digital space. Um, 
So first and foremost, reach out to teachers early and often, right? So we're hitting what I call like the downhill at Great America on the Eagle to Christmas, right? It goes really fast. And so um, please start to reach out to those teachers. If there's something that you don't understand that you see in the grade book, if there's something that you don't understand in uh, Google Classroom, the teacher is the best place to start. So reach out to those teachers, establish relationship early and often. Um, let make your students share their Google login and password. I have both of my, ch my two children in high school, I have their login and passwords and I log in and check their stuff from time to time. So I can just make sure that, you know, they're on track. Um, but I also develop kind of like a daily or a weekly check-in. Now I have a freshman and I have a senior. So how I approach my senior is very different than how I approach my freshman. My freshman, those check-ins are pretty much daily. <laughs> what do you have to do? Where is it? Let me see it. Did you press the turn in button? So very pointed discussions, right? So just make that part of like the family habit of, you know, checking in, what's your goals? How was school today? You know, are you meeting with anyone during the remote sessions in the afternoon? Who do you need to meet with? When's your next summative assessment? Um, just learning the language and asking the questions can usually get students a, um, a little bit further in what they need to be doing. Um, help your student make a schedule for the afternoon sessions. If you know a summative assessment is coming up, um, they can make an appointment with their teacher in the afternoon to meet with them and get help. Um, we would really love for our students to be taking more advantage of these afternoon sessions to check in with their teachers. This is a great time to have some one-on-one -on -one attention um, or small group attention with those teachers. And so please maximize those afternoon sessions. Um, there have been times where I've said to my child, hey, listen, you're gonna go see this teacher in the afternoon instead of who are you going to see in the afternoon? Just because I know that might be a place where he's struggling. Um, help your students with some strategies to self-advocate. So again, like I said, I treat my senior very differently than I teach, treat my freshmen, um, but still the point is to get them to start advocating for themselves, to get them to start asking their teachers questions. And so when you see that they might be struggling, just encourage them to reach out to their teacher. Okay, reach out to your teacher, explain to them your situation. You have three summative assessments on Friday. Okay, well that's a lot, so maybe take take a couple of your teachers or one of your teachers and say, hey, can I turn my assessment in at a different time? I have three summative assessments. Teaching them that self-advocacy skill will save a lot of stress. And if there's anything that we wanna do right now is to eliminate stress that's unnecessary, right? Um, so help them kind of ad learn to advocate for themselves. Help them write emails if they need to email their teachers so that they can be very specific on what their needs are. Um, Encourage your students to do remote learning in a place that's comfortable, but conducive to learning also. So if, like, I know if I let my son do his remote learning wherever he wanted, it would be like in his bottom bunk, right? So um, I know for him that he needs to be sitting at the table, but it's a comfortable chair and it's a comfortable table. And so um, I know that he needs to be sitting at that space. So you know your kids, you know what they can and can't handle, um, but I just try to make that space consistent. Um, and then encourage, have them encourage them to actively participate in their class. Um, you know, we don't have a camera on requirement, but I know every teacher here, if I said, would you feel better if students put their cameras on, they would like resounding yeses. They would love to see their faces. They would love to hear from them. And when teachers call on them, they want to hear them unmute and answer questions and engage in discussions um, in breakout rooms or with the whole class. So encourage them to participate. Um, and we know that every home context is different. We know that there are some students doing remote learning next to their parent who's doing remote work. We understand that, we're sensitive to that. If you have situations where you're like, okay, we can't turn our camera on, we don't feel comfortable turning our camera on, that's fine, then it's, it's definitely okay. But we just wanna make sure to encourage some level of conversation and participation um, with teachers. And then again, like, you know your babies, you know what's good for them. And you, I, I know that, um, you know, each kid requires something a little different. So, you know, just as long as you're consistent and there's a level of consistency for them, I think that that's key. So those are just a few tips that we just kind of collected um, over this time where we've been learning about 
how to do remote learning, what works and doesn't work. Um, and then for the rest of the session, we're just going to focus on the digital and uh, the digital platforms. So first, we're going to start with Google Classroom, and explaining Google Classroom, we have Tony Swafford and Kelly Carey. So I'm going to stop sharing now and let them go ahead and share. Hi, I'm Kelly Carey. This is my seventh year at BBCHS. Um, I work in the English department. I teach English, and I am a reading specialist. And so I am going to walk you through what Google Classroom looks like. So what you're looking at right now is what my Google Classroom page looks like. So when I log into my own account, this is what I see every day. Um, I'm going to show you first what we're able to do so that you have a better understanding of how we're using it. And then I'll also show you what it looks like for your student. So on the home page, everything appears in the stream, whether it's an assignment or an announcement. And we can type right here to leave an announcement for your students. I know Tony uses his Google Classroom page slightly differently than I do. Um, but here is where I put all of my recordings for the day. So for any students who weren't able to be in the live session for whatever reason, or if they need to go back and revisit it, it's always right here in those announcements. Over on the classwork tab then, um, we're able to create a variety of different assignments. So we can create an assignment, whether that's an essay or if we want to use a worksheet digitally and have each student respond to it, we can add that there. We can put quizzes there. So if a student has to take a formative assessment, it can be added right there to Google Classroom. We can create questions so students can participate in discussion boards and have discussions, whether they're in the classroom or at home. And then we're also able to add materials. So any PowerPoints that we might use or reading or anything like that can also be listed here. Over on the side, you'll see all of these different topics. This allows us to organize our pages. And so your students are then able to use this on their own to navigate those topics, kind of like a tag, and then find whatever is specific to that assignment. So right here was all of the materials for the summative. It makes it nice and easy for students to locate everything they need that way. And then over on the homepage too is always the link to the Google Meet for that class. So both students and teachers have the link available to them right there in order to access the Meet for class that day. You'll notice up here there's a tab for people. Students have this as well. On our end, we are able to add parents and guardians to classes. So then you receive um, daily updates on anything that was assigned to your student and anything they might be missing. And so that is an option that this platform also provides to us. When I switch over to the student view then, you'll notice that it looks almost identical. I'm in another teacher's class right now, Linnea Rons is her student, so it doesn't look totally the same, um, but everything here is the same. I have the stream here with any announcements or materials that were posted for your student right here. They can see all of their due dates upcoming due dates. So they know what's coming up and what they need to get done. And then when you switch over to the classwork tab here, they have the option to view their own work. And so that will link them to anything that they have um, to do still that they need to get done. It will also link them to their Google Drive folder that houses all of their copies of assignments. They have all of that there. And when you scroll down the page, you can easily see what's been completed and what hasn't. And then it is also um, all of the due dates are listed here too to make it nice and easy to see what is coming up. Um, when you click over to people for students too, at the top they have their teachers for the course listed and this little envelope over here, if they click on that, it will immediately open an email to their teacher so they can very easily contact their teachers as needed right from the Google Classroom page. And the last thing that your student might be using Google Classroom for is feedback. And so this is an example of what that looks like. Um, so if a teacher is grading materials for students and giving feedback through Google Classroom, this is what your student will get back. So you can see the comments that I left to the student over here on the side on specific parts of their essay. The overall grade is here at the top and Google Classroom now also gives us the option to embed a rubric. So over here on the side, you can see what that rubric what that rubric looks like um, and you can see what area is marked on the rubric to show how that student scored on that assignment. So sometimes if we are using this to grade, 
All of your students' feedback will be here. Everything that they need for um, review for reassessment might be included here. And they're able to quickly see what they have to do in order to um, reassess if that's the case. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that Tony can walk you through how your student can use Google Classroom to stay organized. Hi, my name is Tony Swafford. I teach science at BBCHS. This is a uh, year 18 for me in education and uh, I'm going to just run through a little bit. Thank you, uh, Miss Carey, for getting us going on Google Classroom. I'm sharing my Google Classroom with you right now and uh, you can see I uh, teach some, some biology, some anatomy, and then I also teach AP biology. And a couple of things I wanted to talk about today uh, is uh, how students are connecting with us in a virtual way. And Ms. Carey showed us that as well. And that's by going to Google Meet, which is part of every Google Classroom. Uh, Google actually puts the Meet in there. Um, the link is in there for students and every student is able to connect to us in that fashion. So we're doing that every day virtually. Uh, and then sometimes in the classroom, I even had students get on the Google Meet because it just helps with breakout rooms and uh, using that virtual environment in, in a cooperative learning sense. Um, other things that I wanted to make sure I addressed today was uh, looking at my classroom materials. So uh, one of the things I do, I'm an AP, my AP biology, it's probably my best school classroom, which is why I took you here. Um, and you can see that uh, we have quite a few things that are starting to pile up um, in Google Classroom. What I try to do is condense it a little bit by putting things in a materials tab. Uh, Ms. Carey showed you that that is an option. And here's the one for outcome three. We just started this outcome. So right now we've had three little uh, lectures or uh, classroom activities where I was recording the screen. And we have one PowerPoint that we're working in. So students have the avail availability of having um, a sort of uh, reduced amount of information from the textbook in a PowerPoint. So that's what we're doing. And I will continue to add to this. By the end of the outcome, this will probably have maybe 10 videos in it, uh, a couple of review activities, and then a couple of different PowerPoints. So at the end, this materials list will get quite beefy and students know they can go there. And I had a couple tell me, a couple students told me the last outcome, they really appreciated having it all in one spot so they could go and find uh, a video that maybe they needed to watch or rewatch so they could uh, relearn because we all learn at different uh, speeds. So um, that is the materials list. I want to also make sure I talk about uh, the Google Calendar. So if your child were to click on classwork, there is an embedded calendar function which exists in, in Google Classroom, which I am a huge fan of. So I like this because I can, when, when pressed, the student can get to the same calendar that I am using. So this pulled up our AP Biology calendar. You can see uh, all of the, every topic that we're covering. For instance, this week on Monday, we started with learning about the function of enzymes. And then we actually on Wednesday did a virtual lab together. And now they are writing a claim evidence reasoning uh, paper uh, over the enzyme lab. So that is actually due at uh, 11.59 uh, tomorrow night. So I gave them till tomorrow night to get that finished. More about that in a second. But this this uh, calendar has been amazing for me because there's no way that students cannot know what we did, when things are due, so on and so forth. I also have in this uh, Google uh, calendar, I post my office hours. So every day, Monday through Thursday, I'm available for my AP Bio students from 2 to 2.45. They can click on the office hours and it actually click on join with Google Meet, it'll bring them to a virtual office hours that I sit in every day. I would say on average, I have between um, zero and five students in an office hours. So it doesn't get uh, it, there. I can provide individualized attention to students, which is amazing. Okay, so I, I really uh, hope that students will start to use that those office hours a little more regularly. One of the last things I wanted to talk about was uh, due dates. So you saw that in, uh, in the calendar, it actually posted this little link here, which just says, hey, this is due. Okay, you're also going to notice when I post something, for instance, I posted this CR. We have a couple students that have turned it in, four of them, great job. You can see that over here, off to the right, I'm able to provide a date for when that's due. So when I provide that date, it kicks in the Google Calendar uh, 
link that something is due. It also adds it to um, the, uh, actually adds it to the assignment itself in Google Classroom. So those are the things I wanted to talk about. I appreciate you guys being here. This is the first time I've been on a panel, so I'm super excited. But that is all I have from uh, my neck of the woods. Thanks, guys. You're muted, Mrs. Cole. Sorry. Thanks, Tony and Kelly Carey. Um, any questions about Google Classroom specifically? Alyssa Carl, thank you for answering some of those questions in the chat already. Remember, um, I said this early on, so if you weren't here right before we started, um, you can write questions in the chat um, and then hopefully we can get to those either um, sometime throughout the presentation or after the presentation. Um, one thing that I think is important to note about Google Classroom, um, and Tony kind of alluded to it, is that there are multiple ways to get to the same thing. So if it's on, it could be on your stream and it's on your calendar. So there are multiple ways to see what you need to see um, in terms of assignments. And I think Kelly Carey showed this too, is that when the assignment is completed, the little thing changes color, right? And so I think that that was important for, that was an important note for some of my kids is that they were like, oh, okay, now I just see what I have to do. Um, Cause it's not, it's already, this is already turned in, this is not turned in, helps kind of like sort it out for them. Okay. Um, any questions, uh, Callie, do you see that need to be answered about Google Classroom? I don't see any. Um, no, there's a question about, um, office hours, which Tony answered. And I think Alyssa Carl answered that too. So yes. please remember, um, and I'm gonna talk about this also a little bit later, but teachers are available for office hours uh, starting at 105 um, and all the way till 320. So students can sign up to see their individual teachers. And like Tony said, it's not too super crowded space. And so um, your student would get lots of individualized attention in that space. Okay, so moving on, we are going to talk about Canvas. Canvas is a learning platform that not every teacher, a very small group of teachers is using at BBCHS. It's in its pilot year. Um, so you might not, you might like, okay, I don't even know what you're talking about. So if you don't, that's okay. That's why we're gonna have them individualized um, when we record these and put them on the website. Um, but at having a freshman, I have, I have every learning platform here on my, for my freshmen, and then I've got a couple for my seniors. So um, Andrew Lepowski and um, Alyssa Carl are some of our Canvas rock stars. So they're gonna talk about Canvas. Uh, hey everyone. Uh, so my name is Andrew Lepowski and I'm going to be, like Ms. Cole said, uh, presenting with Alyssa Carl. Um, we are a couple of the math teachers here and between the two of us, we have over a decade of experience using learning online learning platforms in the school. Um, we start, you know, we've done, we both use Google Classroom. Um, we've went to Schoology way back in the day. Um, and now we're actually going to be looking at Canvas. We're part of that pilot program. Her and I both her and I both um, used Canvas for student as a student, um, like when I was getting my master's a few years ago. So we're working through some things. Admittedly, you know, as we pilot this, there's a couple of nuances we're figuring out, um, but we're gonna kind of just give you a rundown here of, of what you may expect with Canvas or if you have questions or things like that, um, hopefully we can answer these. So uh, first thing here is do, 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 to get to Canvas. And if you use your students, um, or if you use your child's computer or whatnot, this is going to be bookmarked and saved, but you are going to go to bbchs.instructure.com. Uh, about a few weeks ago, we got an official school license, so, so the website to access it changed, um, but this is where they're going to go for now. And if you type it in, uh, it's going to take you to a page that looks a little bit like this. So you're not going to have this magenta bar at the bottom. Um, that's just because I'm in a student view as the teacher to show you just a couple things. So it's gonna take you to a page that looks like this. And while the middle of the page you think has the most important information right now, it's actually the stuff on the sides uh, that, that we really wanna talk about. So uh, first thing that's gonna happen is you will see like this grayish bar on the left side. Um, and then you'll see the second drop bar with some more tabs. And if you don't see this, uh, the triple bar at the top, just click on it and you will get these options. 
And the first thing I want to point out is on the far right, you're going to see a to-do list. And for your child, this can really act as your little checklist of things that they have to accomplish, whether it be uh, assignments, whether it be discussion questions, it's all going to be here. Okay. And, and, and they'll have due dates and assignments and things like that. So essentially when they're logging into class, uh, they can see like, hey, have I completed this? Have I not completed this? Where, when is this due? When is that due? It's all going to be right here for every class they have in Canvas. Okay. So really the question of what are we doing can be answered with this to-do list. Now, Ms. Carl and I use this Canvas for math. Um, we have different functionality aspects of it that we use. Uh, Spanish teachers may use it in a different way. English teachers will use that in a different way. So when we talked among the little group, we found out that all of us have all of our information and we live inside this tab right here. It's called the modules tab. That's where all of us post all of our things. Uh, most of us have it broken down by weeks in some format. So what you're gonna do is, you know, your student comes home, says, what are you working on? Do you have these materials? You know, how do I find the materials? It's going to be this modules tab right here. Me personally, I have a pacing guide. Uh, and then I have the assignments and things that we're going to link throughout the days. You can see some due dates and things like that. Um, it's all there. So walking out of this webinar, if there's one thing you want to remember about Canvas, if you don't know where it's at, modules it's where, is where it's going to be. Okay, so you've got You've got this little to-do list here, okay, that's going to give you that little uh, quick little rundown of the assignments and things that are due. You've got your modules tab here. And now some teachers use this a little bit more than others. I use it a little, I would say I use it a little bit more than others. It's this announcements tab. Um, if you do click on it, this will bring you into the announcements. Um, this is most similar to that news feed feel of Google, or of Google Classroom. So you'll see I'm posting every you know, couple of days, just a quick little rundown on where, where we are at in life and stuff like that. So just something to keep in mind, you know, if I'm gonna be absent a day or something, you know, it's, it's there. Um, back in the homepage, uh, I made this specific part of my page, just the announcements, like straight up, just announcements, notifications, discussions. Um, Ms. Carl's gonna show you uh, her homepage, which is um, a little, it's, it's really nice. She's put some work into it. It looks really nice. It looks much better than mine. Um, but she uses hers for a little bit different purpose. Um, and that's gonna be dependent on the teacher. Uh, but really, you have your to-do list, you have your modules, uh, and then you can have announcements if you want. And then the one thing, kind of like with uh, what Mr. Swafford said about the Google Calendar, is if you look in this gray area, you've got the Canvas Calendar, okay? And you can see all my due dates for assignments here. Uh, the only class I teach using Canvas is, well, the only, class I teach is pre-AP Algebra 1. Um, so you see all the due dates right here for all those assignments. Um, that's in green. If there were more than one, if there was more than one class your student had using Canvas, you'd see all of it in one spot. So very similar to Google Classroom, um, obviously just in Canvas. So this kind of gives you a brief outlook in the functionality of Canvas, how to access it, your little quick little to-do checklist, and where to find most, well not where to find most, where to find all of the information. And Ms. Carl now is gonna go kind of uh, over from the student perspective, what it looks like for your student to submit assignments and complete work and things like that. All right, awesome. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you for the introduction as well. Um, my name is Alyssa Carl and I teach math here at BBCHS. And I just have a couple things I wanna add on to Andrew's. I feel like he gave you a really good overview. And as a parent, I feel like that's, that's what you guys are looking for. You're not looking for the nitty gritty. Um, but I just want to show you a couple of things in addition to his, kind of give you a different perspective. I know a lot of you are thinking um, you want a general view of this, right? Not just specific to one class. So hopefully us combining ours together can kind of give you a good view of what this might look like for your student. So I'm going to show you my Canvas and then I specifically want to show you um, what assignments look like in Canvas. So you might be hearing from your student um, the different types of assignments that they're getting and I just want to show those to you fairly quickly here. So as Andrew noted, um, the homepage for everyone can look very different. So I think each teacher chooses what works for them. And I think that um, the simplicity of Andrew's is awesome. Uh, what I did with mine is I just kind of made some buttons for my students to use. So for instance, if they don't have the Google Meet bookmark, they could click that. Um, that help, afternoon help sessions, that's what I have linked up here. I also have a ton of like my outcome three videos, my outcome three answer keys, all that good stuff. 
Okay, so that is what my homepage functions at. But again, the sidebars are still the same. So really it's just kind of um, whatever additional information they might want there. So under modules is where, all we, is where we all live, but another tab that your student might like to use, and one tab I've seen students use, is the assignments tab. Um, on there, it'll show you upcoming assignments, and it will also show you past assignments or overdue assignments, okay? So the thing that is nice here, um, and I'll kind of run through and show you, is that it tells you when they're available, what the due date is, uh, what they're out of, all of that good stuff. So there's three assignments I want to show you and then we will um, conclude the Canvas portion of this. So the first one that I would like to show you is this assignment here. Actually, I'm gonna show you the next one first. Is this assignment right here. So when a student has an assignment, it'll tell them the due date, how many points, what the teacher would like them to submit, and then maybe how many attempts that they are allowed and when it's open. So right now you can't see anything except for the instructions, but if you click this big blue button up here that says submit assignment, then they'll see all the tabs with options. So for this assignment, I said that they could upload whatever they wanted so they could add a file for me. Uh, they could maybe just type their answer out right into Canvas, add some, we love the math tools in the math department. I know that's what we love about Canvas. They could do a website URL or they could actually um, just upload straight from their Google Drive so they could access any files that they've had for another class or anything they've been assigned outside and just add it straight from there. So once they add it, um, they would click a submit button. I can do that for you. So click submit and it will give them a nice little confetti party here and tell them that it's been submitted. And also since this one had multiple attempts, they're able to resubmit it. A lot of teachers have that multiple attempt set up, especially for homework assignments, because they want to be able to have the students get feedback and keep going through that. So that's just a generic assignment they could have. Um, the other type of assignment is a Google integrated assignment. So this actually makes it a lot like Google Classroom in the sense of I can assign one thing and it can make individual copies for each student. Um, it functions the same way, but one thing I think is important is that you guys know how students are able to see their feedback because I've heard from a lot of parents, um, their kid wants to know what they got right and wrong and how to kind of fix that for themselves. So to show you some feedback here, this is an assignment I already turned in as a sample student and then I went back myself and graded it. So the student can see their grade here. Uh, they can obviously see what they clicked or what they submitted and if I left any comments. And then they can also see overall feedback here at the bottom. So there is a lot of spaces in Canvas for your student to receive some individual feedback, which is another uh, good feature of it. And that is something that uh, is only beneficial if the student knows that and then the student is able to go find that themselves. So that's why I felt like that was important for you to see. The last really type of assignment that we will see in Canvas are these um, what they call quizzes. And quizzes are essentially just a built in quiz. So it gives feedback automatically. Um, it has question types. When I was in college, this is uh, what I did all the time. So they will click this blue take the quiz button and then they'll see whatever types of questions the teacher answered. You can see over here which ones you have done, which ones you haven't, and so on and so forth. So there's obviously a bunch of different question types, um, some multiple choice. I'll just do a couple here so we can get some feedback. Some where they have to type and so on and so forth. Okay, and then there's also like numeric answers where they have to put something in there. So I'll just type a number there. It does save for them automatically, which I know a lot of students appreciate because then they can work on it multiple times and not have to do it all in one sitting. And then when you click this submit quiz button, it'll tell you if you have unanswered questions. And when you submit it, your student will automatically be able to see their score. So they'll be able to see when they submitted it. Um, it tells us just like it tells them how long they took. And then it's able to go through and tell them um, what they got right, what they got wrong. I like to put in some feedback for them. So right away they can see, oh, I got this wrong. Here is what the right answer could have been. Um, just so they don't have to wait for me to go through and grade that for them. So that is uh, the quiz functionality of it. Again, I have this open for unlimited attempts. So really you could keep taking it again and again until they get it right. And my rationale behind that, and it's as well as a lot of teachers, is if we are assigning homework, especially digitally, we want them to be able to take it until they feel like they truly understand the material, um, not just kind of as a uh, gotcha, one and done, turn it in type of assignment. So 
Canvas as a whole, as Andrew said, is a pilot, um, a pilot that's looking to grow. Currently, it's the leading uh, learning management system for colleges in the U.S. So it's something that, uh, as Tiffany mentioned at the beginning, is really preparing your student for their post-grad education and something that we feel like is super uh, beneficial for them. So if you have questions on Canvas, you can ask Andrew and I. Um, you can also, I would say, ask that teacher specifically because they're going to have the best idea of how they are using that platform. So I will turn it back over to Tiffany. Um, so there's one question in the chat that I want to address. Um, it's basically, are Google Classroom and Canvas pretty much separate but equal, just depending on teacher's preference? Um, so Google Classroom has some great functionality, but Canvas has a little bit more of a sophisticated functionality. So when Alyssa was showing you that like embedded quiz where the students could write in those text boxes right there in that stream, that's not something that is available through Google Classroom. So when I'm watching my own child do something in Google Classroom, many times they have to open this and then open this and use this material to type on this Google Doc, then submit it. In Canvas, it's all in one space. Um, and there's just higher levels of functionality with Canvas. So um, we chose to onboard Canvas this year because we knew um, it, it would provide some um, some more bells and whistles really than than Google Classroom does. Um, both are really great products though. Both are like if your child is only in Google Classroom, they're not really missing anything. They're just having to negotiate more windows probably. Um, in addition, you can embed videos in Canvas and that sort of thing. Like Alyssa said, Canvas is the leading learning management system for colleges and universities. And so we wanted to give our students that um, exposure to that so that they could be more successful in post-secondary situations. However, we didn't want to mandate it for all teachers because of the nature of the times. Uh, many of our teachers were very fluent in Google Classroom, very comfortable in that space. Some didn't have any learning management, so Google Classroom was a good first step for them. And so the, this group of teachers that is kind of piloting Canvas are teachers that said, hey, I'm willing to take on something new. Even amidst, even amidst COVID, I'll take on something new um, and kind of pilot it and, and work out the kinks for everybody else. And so um, that's really the difference between those. So I did want to address that. Um, that was in the chat. Um, and then I think that addresses Judy's question. Um, why are we using different platforms? Uh, again, Google Classroom is something that we've had for a, quite a while. Um, it, it, it also has grown. Through, through this, this journey of COVID because Google is responsive to what's happening in the world, right? Um, so they've added a lot more things, especially in terms of Google Meet. Um, but the reason why we're doing that is because we know that Canvas is kind of the um, high level learning management system and we wanted to make sure that our students had exposure to that. Um, okay, so the next learning platform that we're gonna go through is AP Classroom. So this would only be for students who have pre-AP courses or advanced placement courses, um, which is quite a few of our students. We have over 450 students in our advanced placement program. Um, when students come into BBCHS, they must take pre-AP algebra if they're not already in geometry. Um, and so next year, we're gonna be rolling out pre-AP um, English, social science, science, and math for all students, uh, all freshman students. So it will be an interface that freshmen and sophomore will be interacting with a lot. And then hopefully when your child is a junior or senior, they're taking those AP classes, those advanced placement classes, that if they pass those tests can be money in your pocket in terms of college credit. And so we really want to provide students the um, the preparation necessary to be successful at that junior senior level in those advanced placement classes. And that's what pre AP does. And AP classroom is where all of that lives. Um, so I am going to hand it over to Dana Romano and Paige Jervis who are going to talk about pre AP. They're also going to be using a live student account. So I just wanted to prepare you ahead of time for that. Um, and they have parent permission because I am the parent. So you will be seeing my own students' uh, AP classroom today. 
All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we are Dana Romano and Paige Derbis. And like Mrs. Cole said, we're two of the pre-AP teachers here at BBCHS. Um, I teach pre-AP world history and geography, and Paige teaches pre-AP biology. Uh, we've been part of the pre-AP program from the pilot year and are really excited to be here tonight to help guide you through the College Board learning platform, referred to as AP Classroom. Um, out of all the classrooms and all of the platforms we use, um, I do feel that AP Classroom can be the most challenging for students, teachers, and parents. Um, so we thank you in advance as we go through all of the small details to help you feel confident to help your student um, through this process. Um, so first, we're gonna start with um, this document. Uh, this document is for students who have not created a College Board account. Um, if they have not created an account, um, please have them go to the College Board account creation document. Uh, this document walks students through step-by-step -step how to create a College Board account and get into their pre-AP and AP classes. The document can be found under the Blended Learning Resources page on the BBCHS website or on a Google Classroom of their teacher or the Canvas platform um, for their teacher as well. Students may have an account from middle school and they may need to update that because they can't create a new account if they already have one created. So please check with your student first about their account status. If there are no sign-in issues, um, or if there are sign-in issues, excuse me, your student will need to call the help number at 888-225-5427 to gain access to the account. No one at BBCHS, teachers or anybody else will be able to help your student get into the account. Um, and so they're gonna have to call that number to get into it. This is the trickiest and most frustrating part. We understand that, we sympathize with that. That's just the best option that we have at the moment. However, good news is once they have their account, um, they will need to go to the website. To get to the website, students will go to and log into apclassroom.collegeboard.org which we will go ahead and get into now. And a screen will show up that has various pre-AP or AP subjects your student is enrolled in or has the class code for. If your student does not have the class code for that class like they would need for a Google Classroom, they will need to contact their teacher because it's specific to each class. Once your student clicks on a class, at the top of the screen, any quizzes, also called learning checkpoints, should appear. If you do not see an assignment or quiz, that means that, you, that your student has missed the window for that quiz and they will need to contact their teacher. Here though, you can also view results. Um, so if you have completed a learning checkpoint, they can re review their results by clicking on the box that is labeled view results. Here they can see this, the questions that they've missed uh, what skills they're doing well with or what they need to work on. Uh, there is so much information within these results that you can look at those and really break down what your students' strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and you can see kind of at the top level uh, what they got overall. And the best part is, is they can really see what skills they're doing well in and these skills will continue to build throughout all of their AP classes. So if we want to go back, we just click on home. Um, and once your student has uh, looked at their results, they may be, it may be time to do another quiz or learning checkpoint. Um, so once the student then finds their quiz, they can go ahead and click on their quiz. And they will go through and answer each question based on the information provided. Uh, you'll notice it's very similar to a lot of SAT style questions. Um, and so it's not only preparing them for the class, but it's preparing them for SAT style questions to help them later in their high school career. Uh, students can click through the questions at their own pace. Answers are saved and be completed within the assessment window. So if a student starts a quiz at school, it will save and the student can finish it at home as long as within the window uh, that's given to them to complete the quiz. When they're ready to submit they have, and they have completed all their questions, they should hit submit on the right-hand side. Uh, there's also space on the right-hand side to make annotations, to click the help button, um, and different setting tools if they would like it bigger, if they'd like it smaller, um, if they would like a different font, I think it does it too, or expanding a passage. Um, so there's a lot of things that could be really helpful to make it easier for your students. 
Now, when your student is done with their particular quiz or their particular class, they can go ahead and navigate between classes. And to do that, they should go to the top left-hand corner and click on the title of the class and a drop-down menu will appear and students can click on the class that they would like to work in. Uh, if they ever get lost or are trying to look for that blue bar and quizzes that they normally look for, they may always click home or they can click their name and then my AP. And if you click on your name and my AP and scroll down, um, it will get you back to that homepage and it'll also show you the assignments that are due for that week in the courses that you are enrolled in. And it also um, shows you at the bottom how to join a new course if they need to. So we've kind of talked a little bit about quizzes for the most part. And right now in most pre-AP classes, that's what students are using AP Classroom to do. Um, however, there may be times where students would like to complete their pre-AP workbook pages online. Um, in the pre-AP class, students were given a pre-AP workbook that corresponds with the lessons they're expected to complete. However, if the dog eats the workbook or they can't find it or it's under the bed and they would rather, or they would rather complete it on the computer, uh, they can access the workbook pages from their subject's AP classroom homepage. Students will just scroll down to the lesson they are on, click the plus sign, and a drop-down menu will appear. And here they can click on an editable student handout. Uh, and this handout can be written, written on, typed on, um, and downloaded to upload to other platforms. Um, I know that in my class, this is what we use a lot when we're going over workbook pages. So that way everybody can uh, see what's going on and everybody can type on their document. And although we are here fo to focus mainly on pre-AP, uh, like Mrs. Cole said, this classroom setup is the same platform that's used for students who also take AP classes. So in various AP classes, uh, teachers can assign work, they can assign FRQs, practice multiple choice questions and videos to help students. Uh, so if this is the uh, format that they're learning when they're freshmen, it will continue to help them as they get older and enter into AP classes. Um, this is also the format that students will sign up for AP tests with. Um, and this is again where material and practice tests can be given, which could be really helpful. Um, so once mastered, these skills will transfer to students' AP classes later in their high school career. Uh, so finally, AP Classroom can be difficult to manage. Um, however, hopefully this information helps you feel more confident in helping your student through uh, their pre-AP quizzes, their lessons, their AP classes. And thank you for your time. And I'm going to send it back to Mrs. Cole for any questions. I do want to uh, mention that your student's College Board account login is also the same place that they'll get their PSAT scores and SAT scores. Everything lives in that same space. Um, so that's really helpful for parents too, to kind of see where their student is in terms of the SAT. So we give our students, um, we give our feeder schools the PSAT 8-9. We administer the PSAT 8-9 here, the PSAT 10, the PSAT MNSQT. Oh, there it is, thanks. Beautiful, Dana. Um, so all of his scores are right there so that I can see where he's, where he's progressing. Also, when I look in there, I can click on questions that he's gotten wrong and I can see what skills they connect to and, and then it delivers practice to him, prescribed practice to him. Um, so that is a really useful um, login and password. So make sure you acquire that from your student. If you don't acquire any passwords from your student, acquire that one. But I suggest you acquire all of them <laughs> um, so that you can just kind of help your student uh, kind of monitor what's happening. I'm gonna share my screen again because I have a couple more pieces of information to share with you. And then I have a few questions I wanna answer that were in the chat. Um, and then we'll, we'll be done for the evening. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share now. So we've talked a little bit about um, the sessions after school, but we also wanna tell you or communicate to you that we have what's called a remote learning room. Um, and Evan, I think you're on this call. Evan, do you want to talk about the remote learning room? 
You have to promote him to a panelist. He's I thought a- I did. It, he like popped in, popped out, so. Oh, forget it then. I'll talk about it. Um, so the remote learning room is a place where people can go. Um, if, if your student is having a really hard time stru- like um, concentrating at home, or you know, you're working and can't monitor your student as well as you'd like to on a couple of days, or maybe every day, I don't know. Um, they can come to BBCHS, they can take the bus here to BBCHS, and they can go to the remote learning room. The remote learning room is staffed with BBCHS personnel that will just basically provide a safe, quiet space for your students to do remote learning on their remote learning day. Um, they don't need to sign up for this, they just need to show up. Um, right now, we don't have that many um, that are showing up every day, but we have space for students. So, um, you know, I know, and you could have some, some of your students could be fine um, at home and doing their work. And then sometimes you're just like, hmm, this one kid of mine, they need some, a little bit more structure. And so this is just a level of intervention for those students that might need a little bit more structure or a safe, quiet place. Maybe you've got lots of kids at home or you are also remote uh, working. And so there's many days where you're having meetings and they're trying to do school. This is a really good option. And so that's from 8 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. Um, in addition, we have uh, different um, transportation that is happening this year as opposed to previous years. Um, and that transportation really um, is kind of like a shuttle, right? It's kind of like the Disney World shuttle. So the buses bring the kids home and kids can get back on the buses. And so we have buses running from 1215 to 115. And then also, um, you know, everybody departing from BBCHS at 245. Okay, um, one more topic, which is really not a learning platform, but is really important for parents to uh, learn how to navigate and understand. And that is Infinite Campus. And that's our school information system. That's where the grade book lives. That's where attendance lives. Um, and here to talk about that, we have Laura Rewerts, who is our Dean of uh, Attendance um, in our Student Services Office. And so she's gonna share her screen and begin talking about that. Hi guys, um, like Ms. Cole said, I'm Laura Rewerts. I am the Dean of Students at BBCHS and my function mainly is in attendance. Um, I'm in my 15th year of education, um, formerly a science teacher. Um, so what I'm gonna talk to you guys about is uh, pretty much the Infinite Campus app that we have available for both parents and students. Um, this would be the logo of the Infinite Campus app. The parent version is gonna have a large P constellation and the students is gonna have an S. Um, so the parents are gonna to wanna to download the parent version of this. Uh, when logging into the app, there's a couple things that you need to do to get uh, funneled into our BBCHS Infinite Campus um, database. Uh, like I said, you're gonna look for this P Constellation um, app symbol in your app store. Once you download the app, it's gonna prompt you to list your district name and state. Um, I've put in here Bradley uh, hyphen Bourbon A Community High School as much as it would allow me to type, uh, but I did try earlier and just Bradley will pull up our school. Select Illinois and then it'll take you to this screen and then you would just select Bradley Bourbon A Community High School as your school. Once you do that, it prompts you to uh, a login screen. Um, and since if you are new to this, um, you would select the new user uh, portion down on the bottom. If you already have a student in um, the system and you've already used this, you can use your regular parent username um, and password. If you are a new user, there is one piece of information that does make it a little bit more complicated. Um, it's gonna ask you for an activation key. So every parent that we have or guardian that we have on file at the school and every student's also gonna have a unique GUID number. Um, so you will need to contact uh, someone at the school for those numbers. So I'm gonna throw up here uh, a real quick chart. Um, we have a freshman level counselors, uh, according to names, Alpha Slices. We have Dave Lumine, Stacey Strovers, or Joe Kubel. So any of these counselors or assistant principals of your student could be contacted um, to get the GUID number, or you could contact uh, me as well. Um, the freshmen, like I said, are in a different kind of world. We have the SS9, office and that includes two counselors and assistant principal and then anybody 10th grade through 12th grade is alpha sliced out 
um, regardless of their grade level. Once you get that GUID number and you place that in the activation key box, you hit enter, um, a second screen is going to pop up. It's going to ask you to create a username and a password. Um, I believe they ask for a certain number of, uh, of letters, a character and a number, something along those lines, um, and a unique username, user ID name. So once you've done that and you've submitted that um, and everything's good, it will take you to a screen that says success and then to a, another screen that's going to ask you for um, a confirmation security email. You're going to put that in twice just to make sure and you're going to enter the password that you just created earlier. Once you do that, it takes you to the main page of your um, students. So in our computer, we have you linked to your student. Now, if you have multiple students, you would be linked to multiple students. So you'd be able to um, access that from this menu as well. So right when you open it up, you're going to get a message, the message center. Um, sometimes, I mean, the last one we put up there was in September. Um, but you're also going to have a unique inbox that messages can be pushed out to you via that as well. Um, so you can access that inbox. Um, from the main part of the app, uh, we have three different functions. The first one's probably the most important, that triple bar up in the corner. Um, when you click on that, it's going to take you to a tab that looks something like this. We're going to have announcements for today, upcoming calendars, things like assignments would be placed in there. Assignments that teachers have created. Um, that have either been graded or our future upcoming assignments, maybe for the duration of the semester. Um, the grades that your student would have in classes, uh, any updates, um, attendance and schedule. So from there you could see where or who your students teachers are and if you're trying to contact them, um, you can get names and things like that from there. And then also attendance. The attendance is broken down by hours, so it'll tell you how many hours your student has missed in terms of first hour, second hour, third hour, et cetera. The second uh, main function of that infinite campus screen is going to be the little bell symbol right there. That'll be notifications. Occasionally notifications will come through on there. And then the third one would be your personnel, um, you know, personal functions in there, passwords and things like that, uh, emails. Um, and like I said, once you get the GUID number, um, and you can get the ball rolling, you can access all of these tabs. So I've listed right here, it's a slide full of information, um, but a couple of key ones on here uh, is Ms. Dolly LaRock, who is our student information system specialist uh, at BBCHS. She takes care of all of our infinite campus needs. Um, so she is probably your best go-to for your GUID number um, and any issues that you're having with logging on to that. Um, other people can also help, that would be myself. Any of the assistant principals, we have Joe Kubel, who's freshman, um, Matt Fox, who's grades 10 through 12, the beginning of the alphabet, Mr. Zimbelman and Mr. Kemp. And then I've listed the counselors over here, their email addresses that they could, you could connect with them and get those um, GOID numbers. Uh, so you can begin um, you know, using Infinite Campus app and uh, keeping up with your students' grades and attendance uh, and information flowing in from their teachers. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Um, I went ahead and Evan, I made you a panelist. So uh, Evan, I just wanted to give you an opportunity. Evan is our um, director of student services. Um, so he is really in charge of many of the interventions um, that happen here at BBCHS and really um, efforts to support students. So Evan. You're on mute, Evan. Sorry, I didn't test my lighting before the webinar tonight, so I have some uh, some lighting issues going on here. But um, no, Tiffany did a great job explaining those uh, intervention opportunities. We're really excited about um, providing transportation, those afternoon sessions and that remote learning planning room or the remote learning room. So, um, you know, please take advantage of those. Uh, they're staffed and, and we would love to welcome more students to all of those services. Um, so, like I said, if you have any questions, please reach out and, and we'd love for more, more of you to take advantage of those options. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my last screen with you. Um, reminding you that there is transportation. And then finally, um, 
you know, the best place to start with communication is always the classroom teacher, always. Um, but if there are specific questions that you have um, regarding intervention, um, special programming for students, um, Evan is the person you want to contact for that. You know, I have concerns about Infinite Campus and my kids' attendance, that would be Laura. Um, and then if you have questions about what is actually being taught in the classroom, um, that's me and or how it's being taught learning platforms that sort of thing and then really any other information that you might want to find would be on our bbchs website um, i know that um, someone brought it up tonight but there is we're trying to build a, a library of resources for families so that you can go ahead and click on things and look um, and find out information about what's happening here at BBCHS. Um, one piece of information that's connected to Laura's that you should probably know about is that every student is also part of an, uh, a Google Classroom with their uh, class. So you know, my daughter has all her Google Classrooms and then she has her graduating class Google Classroom and that's where all the information is coming through about FAFSA and college applications and scholarships and that sort of thing. So when you get into your student's Google Classroom, you're, you might see that. Um, and that's also a place where there is a wealth of information about post-secondary planning. Um, and so with that, um, I will stop sharing. So um, I just wanna take this moment to thank the teachers and administrators on this call. Thank you for taking time away from your families uh, uh, to do this for us this evening. Um, and if there are any further questions, please direct them to uh, one of us that, you, that I showed on the contacts or that you'll see um, in the video that will be available on the BBCHS website as soon as we have it edited. Thank you so much and have a great night.